thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine. We're fine. Han Solo do. Yes. Was yours your hair or a wig? My hair. Bomb. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> yes. Did that act as sort of like a Samson-esque experience, just giving you strength wherever you went? Sure, yeah. I guess you could put it like that. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It was a whole, you know, wanting it to feel like this or that. Yeah, it was good. Hell yeah. In the entire world of sci-fi, who would you want to be your co-pilot? I gotta say Chewie. I know, Chewie. Because that's the that's really the bread and butter. I mean, that's really who you want to fly with, and uh, yeah. especially as Han, you know, like they just complement each other in that way. Can you tell me a little bit about how you filmed all those stunts? Because you are getting tossed around a lot. Yeah, we had some wires, and then I had a great stunt uh, guy, uh, Luke, who did a lot of stuff. Um, but we were in there, and we were in there for three weeks. Um, and it was the first thing we shot. Whoa. So, yeah, it was pretty wild. Did you get a lot of dirt in your mouth? A tremendous amount of uh, dirt and mud and everything awesome. else. And there's also what you don't see is the 40 people who are making the movie. They're all in the mud pit with you, covered in mud constantly <laughs> all day long. Right. And, <laughs> and then, tr like, trying to wash it out of their hair. I mean, that's how we all started with this. Yeah. Mm hmm. And then you're like, hmm, wow, there's literally mud in places I was not expecting. That's places it. you didn't even know you had. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Do you prefer your Millennium Falcon clean or dirty? A dirty. When you first walked into that bad boy, because yes. I mean, I read like that this is the biggest version that that has ever been built. I know that it's the the inside of it is the I think the first time it's been. You know, there's a shot where you go up the ramp and through in a way I don't think they've done before. Take me back to that moment, man. Like when you yeah. first approached this monster. I walked into it when I was doing my audition. I had my third audition on it with Chewie, and it was. Wild, and you kind of get on it, and it's very familiar. And there's the hollow chest table and the thing, and it was the hallway. It was very, very fun. When you're sitting in the cockpit and you're looking out, what do you actually see? This is one of the things that was really shocking and surprising. So, if this is the cockpit, in front of the it is a screen that is projecting, kind of like old movies. Someone's driving a car and they project the thing in the background they would project everything we're flying through in front of us. So we're looking at all of that and fly, seeing everything we're flying around. And I mean, it's really quite incredible and really puts you in the feeling of it. It's like the ultimate Disneyland ride. It's oh my awesome. gosh, I love it. And like when you hit warp speed, you see that. And you, like, every time we would, you know, do that and it would go and we're there. It was so cool. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Who would you want to be your co-pilot? Well, I'm pretty one over by L3. Ah! L3! Let's go with a mean man's face. She is so smart. And, you know, I mean, and she's entertaining. Yeah. So Boy, I, think isn't she. <laughs> I, I think that's a great combination. Chewie's a little hard for me to understand. He's got chops, he's got skills, but a little hard for me to follow. Yeah. I can I, I can really connect with L3. Listen, I had enough trouble with French in high school. Yeah. Like, Wookiee's not a possibility <laughs> for me. <laughs> but L3, she is so deeply cranky. Yes. <laughs> I was really taken by her because I was like, this robot is real. <laughs> you know? She's so real. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, but... Uh, but you gotta love her. I do. So glad we took this job. If there was any other movie that you could relate this experience to of yours that you've right. directed, which one does it kind of evoke at all? Well, Willow a lot. Similar challenge of creating a you know a universe, visual effects, um, you know heart, but also humor. But this one. I love the plot twists, and I like the way the character relationships worked. So there's there's even more dimension, of course, than in Willow. I liked how unpredictable the relationships were, the action scenes, and the way it all worked to define Han Solo. This journey, this rite of passage that he was going on. As a director, that really gave me something interesting to focus on, but it meant every scene and moments within scenes kept shifting. I had a blast with all that. I was really excited 
for Ron Howard to do a heist movie, mm -hmm. which is exactly what this is. Because I was like, dude, like, imagine somebody asked me, like, how was the premiere? Is it good? And I was like, I don't know, bro. Imagine if it was like Parenthood, but Steve Martin stole stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to perplex them. Yeah, well, that's very perplexing. <laughs> I want to throw them <laughs> off the trail. Well, thank you. Thank you. The crime heist component, it makes so much sense when you realize what he's going to become a smuggler. Yeah. Uh, and as a defining adventure. And yet you wouldn't necessarily think of it. And that's what I loved about the script when I read it. Because it answers a lot of the questions that you might have about Han Solo. What, what, you know, what might have shaped him. But it does it in surprising ways. So it's satisfying. It's logical. But it, it's not exactly what you would have expected. And I thought that was kind of what was brilliant about the story and the script. And for me, sitting in my seat, it was deeply satisfying, too, because I wasn't expecting the things that I saw. Good. And I was like, oh, cool, that's answered. Thank this you. Is that's exactly what the Kazans were going for, and which I and, and, and the one thing that I tried to do as a director, staging the scenes, um, shaping performances, and, 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 and then in the editing, was to always keep making everything be a, about Han. So the whether it's a whether it's an action scene, whether it's a funny scene or something very serious or a twist and a turn. It's all about what does this mean to Han? How's it testing him? How could this potentially shape him as he becomes that iconic character that we're going to know about later? But the other thing is to keep it pure so that you don't have to know anything to, act, to really be able to get into this story and go on this adventure with the characters. And is it weird that every time that you're saying something, I'm just imagining a Star Wars themed Arrested Development episode? <laughs> no, okay? no, no, I like that. That's a, sort of the diversity of my, uh, and dimension of my career. Perfect. I appreciate it, it's very flattering. I heard a story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you've heard about me is true. Whoa. <laughs> L3! Let's go with a mean man's face. Who are these guys? Who would you want to be your co-pilot out of all sci-fi? And I, this is such an easy answer. I mean, oh, in, in, oh in pardon a, me. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, not Ooh. an easy. Careful. It's easy, Jesus. but I mean, like, it's cheesy because it's. I just wouldn't want to be with anybody. Okay, like, get like, like, <laughs> like, I just really I like, wouldn't. Like, this is like, such an, an easy, easy answer. Easy yeah, answer. No, Garfield next. Say, yeah. <laughs> Like, right. It's the only way. It's the uh, only way. I'd, I'd be resenting anyone else. Yeah, I had so much fun in the cockpit with her. Like, I really, we really did. It was just fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Here's yeah. what really stood out about L3. She's super duper cranky. Well, they they do treat her crappily. Yeah. Like throughout okay. the universe, like kind of thing. It's like they don't even serve out kind here. I'm like, I love that line because it's a reference, but it's also like. Yeah, I'd probably want to crush somebody's face if they didn't serve me. Yeah, she's got a lot on her shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. But also, she's just kind of honest about <laughs> it all. She's just sort of like, she doesn't pay respects to anyone who doesn't deserve it. So, I yeah. mean, so, so no one, really, yeah. in her mind. But, um, but that's kind of what's refreshing about her. Yeah, she's just like, get out. That's <laughs> my place. Mm -hmm. Did you feel yourself getting kind of like in that cranky groove? Honestly, when we weren't shooting, all I wanted to do was just do like, weird dance moves in the, uh, in the in the suit because it was just too good. I mean, I found myself doing it alone in a corridor. Just like, because it just felt so good. So the crankiness probably didn't bleed through into, into, into real life, but there was definitely that arc of her being, she's being a bit bolshy and kind of, um, and I, you know, I know you'd have to ask, yeah, the, you'd have to ask the others if I was cranky. No, I mean, especially for what they put her through. Like there was so much on her, like all the time. Like any time, like it was like gets hot, so there's like blowing air at people's face, and then like you have to put this on and you have to use the bathroom. I'm like, I didn't have to. I just had to move a cape out of the way if I wanted to use the bathroom. Oh, which was, you know, exhausting. It was exhausting, <laughs> but not as exhausting as that. Important question: How many capes is too many capes? Um, never. Is that the answer? Is that the right tense? Well, let me give you some advice. We assume everyone will betray you. Never be disappointed. Out of all of the whole sci-fi universe, who would you want to be your co-pilot? I mean, Chewy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Classic. Guy can't go wrong. He's on my boobs for a reason, Amelia Clark. Exactly. Wait a second. Out of the whole what? Sci-fi universe. So I can go anywhere. Anywhere. So I could take Scarlet Witch. Hell yeah, you could. I'm done. 
Well, I'm on a solo press tour, you know what I'm doing? <laughs> hey, we're all under the umbrella. We're all under the Disney umbrella. Here's why I can get down with Dryden Voss, because he is a post-murder rosé kind of guy. Mm. Which I'm yeah. into. Yeah, totally. And I would like to know about his makeup as compared to what you go through for vision. There was no process. There's, the stuff in this was all CG. It's not even real? The whole yeah. thing. Whole thing. And it changes color and goes really dark when I get angry. So yeah, they, 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 they did all of that post. Do you ever drop an accidental spoiler just when you're feeling really casual? Sometimes you forget where you are, who you're talking to, how much alcohol you've drunk. Oh. But it, it depends because I'm not going to lie. My very close friends are going to be very into this. But I've been on Game of Thrones for a little while now and they're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. They're totally They're over a bit it. more interested in like what, what we're chatting about on WhatsApp rather than so that sort of thing. But if I'm dropping it in conversation with a journalist, that's when you're in trouble. Sure, sure. You right, know what right. I mean? Yeah, but your friends are just over it. They're like, yeah, we bit. get it. You're lie. amazing. There are dragons. It's it's done. Yeah. And now you have blasters and every and you're awesome. And like, let's move on and talk about laundry. Well, e well pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah. I am so taken by the Millennium Falcon. And it's the first time that you will have ever seen outside to inside of the Millennium Falcon. We have a shot that takes you from outside the Millennium Falcon to inside the Millennium Falcon. It's a very big deal. And you did that in real life, walked from in outside real life. to the inside. To the inside. You didn't. How bummed out are you about that? Or did you when but the you cameras were rolling? Oh, no, I did. Yeah. And I did. I did. I was like a, a tour guide. I was every friend in London brought their children to set to come on, on the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Yeah. Are you kidding? If you come with us, you're in this life for good. You might want to buckle up, baby. The real challenge has been how in the hell do we even ask questions about this without ruining it? I know. I feel like we're all here together to celebrate love for, for Star Wars, for the whole franchise. It's so comforting because it's something familiar, but we also know we're going to be surprised by, some, by new and exciting. And you also know that everybody involved has done their damnedest to bring you the best of what movies can bring. So I want to expand this to, you can pick anybody from the whole sci-fi universe to be your co-pilot. Well, in a way, it would almost have to be Han because he's the greatest pilot. If you're going to have a co-pilot, you want it to be the best pilot. Oh, I might think of a different one tomorrow, but the first one that I thought about was the, the, blue, the blue lady in Avatar. I love, right, Nefertiri, oh, yeah. right? Is that her name? Yes. I want her. Mm -hmm. And I love the, how big she is compared to human beings, you know? When they when they actually saw each other finally, they're like, she's quite big. I want her in my car or whatever vehicle it is. Oh my god! What is it? Is it? A I don't know, but you'd you always said, be in the HOV lane. No cop would ever pull you over with never. No, two and obviously right? we'd have the roof back because she's big. So a little a big blue head would be out there, and I'd just be like, loving on her. You two are so your characters are so well matched in this movie, and I felt oh, like this amazing nice. harmony and balance. Mm. That's mm. nice. Yeah, including in the, you know, losses and gains of what they go through. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's I go through deep. a little more loss than you do. Yeah, well, I don't know. But I, I will know. say this. I don't know. Well, in the end. No! You know. Well, Speaking you know of harmony. Yeah, change. I mean, take the ego out of it. Yeah, you're Freaking totally Beckett, you got right. such a big ego. Because that's the other thing. They're a couple. They're like, they're, they're kind of like an old married couple. Like, I love how they argue with each other as well. It's like you said, yeah. you know, it's like really uncool. We but you also know that. that they love each other. But that's kind of, it adds to how they love each other. The fact it, that they can have, you know, arguments on screen. Like this one. And off. I sense there's going to be one the minute I walk out of this room. Yeah, girl. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, well, what do you know? I was thinking about how cool it is to see Chewie throwing dudes everywhere. It was the most marvelous thing to to uh, actually get to shoot. I was looking forward to those scenes, and because I, I, the script was awesome, and uh, the the adventure uh, very uh, varied and surprising, unexpected. And, uh, and to get to see that side of Chewie, 
a little bit. Uh, it's going to be great to see uh, how everyone uh, is going to take it. Oh, they're going to flip out is yeah. definitely the response. Can you take me behind the scenes a little bit and tell me how when you are throwing a poor suspecting movie character but who's really a professional up against the ceiling? Like, are they on wires? What's happening there? I think, yeah, it's on. It's a wire gag. Wow. And uh, they're, they're, but you also got to bring it. You got to do it because if you don't, if you don't go through the the motion and, and really jerk them up, it's yeah. not gonna look look real. And we we did a couple of takes of that one, and it was unbelievable That's to awesome. to see it because we really I think we got the we got the perfect take in the, for the movie. Were you totally sore the next day, and then you were just like, oh, dude, yesterday I was throwing dudes against the ceiling like all day long. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we didn't take it. We didn't need that many takes for that. But but uh, but yeah, all, you're always sore when you're playing Chewbacca because uh, he's always out and about doing uh, different stuff. This one's super physical too. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now, if you could pick any character from all of sci-fi, who would you want to be your co-pilot? I think uh, I would have Luke's co-pilot from Empire Strikes Back, Dak. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. choice. Yeah. Deep cut. Because he's, yeah, because he, he would take on the whole empire himself. So I could just let him take on the empire while I sip on a cocktail or something. <laughs>